welcome. I'm Jan Marini, the founder of Jan Marini Skin Research. I am here with Susan. Susan is going to have a consultation today. Um, Susan is actually a school teacher. She's off for the summer, and you teach junior high. Yeah, that's that my correct? preference, yes. <laughs> yes. And so here we are, and I'm going to ask you a few questions. Okay. If there was something you could change or improve about your skin, what would it be? Hmm. <laughs> I have always had a lot of redness in okay. my skin. I've always had larger pores. Um, and more recently, I don't know if it's a, an, a, a later age life thing or what, but I've had a little acne. Okay. And it's like, not have a clue where that's coming from. I've got a couple like age spots and of course wrinkles mm -hmm. is always a thing, but probably the, the pore thing is probably what bothers me the most, the larger pores. Cause when I do makeup, mm -hmm. sometimes, and maybe I'm not doing the right kind, but it like fills it in. And so it looks like I've got these little dots. <laughs> it makes it, okay. accentuates it. <laughs> okay. I do get puffy, really puffy eyes too. Okay. But. See, I have a lot. My list is long. <laughs> when you say puffy eyes, do you mean on the upper lid or the lower? Probably more the lower. Okay. And of course, it's usually in the morning, but it seems like it mm -hmm. stays with me longer. It looks like sometimes it looks like I've been crying for days or something because I just get puffy. Okay. I've got some things I can say about awesome. that. Awesome. <laughs> um, do you think your skin is more normal, combination dry? It used to be oily, and it's definitely gotten more dry. Um, when you say it used to be oily, was it oily everywhere? No, it was more like what they call the T-zone. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's not as much anymore. Okay. I do try to moisturize. I mean, right now I'm actually not using any anything but oil of Olay. I mean, that's like <laughs> I've not used any product Do you think it's more normal now? I think it's more normal dry. Where do you think you're dry? More on that, you know, out here. Okay. And and my, my lips is another thing that's kind of an issue. I always have chap lips. I try Vaseline, I try everything. Vaseline, chapstick. I have not yet found a lipstick that doesn't like curl and mm. crack on me. Okay. Um, okay. I feel like my lips are an issue. <laughs> okay. Is this where I say fix me? <laughs> Okay, so have you ever been a smoker? No. Okay. How about a sunbather? When I was a teenager, yeah. We were the ones that, you know, slathered up with baby oil and would lay in the sun. Yeah, I mean, when they say to you, well, when you, did you use sunscreen when you were growing up? Of course, baby oil and iodine, <laughs> cocoa butter. <laughs> we would even lay on the roof on, you know, the, the metal or the, the oh. silver blankets, you know? <laughs> uh, yes, anything. Oh my gosh. <laughs> really yeah. bad. It was bad. But not recently, no. Probably okay. more like 20, the last 25 years, I haven't been much. So let's talk about what do you wash within the morning? What's the first thing you do? Currently, um, I actually just use, I've, I've had this little bit of a, I don't even know what it is. The doctor said it's a contact dermatitis mm -hmm. under my eye. And he okay. said it had something to do with some product I use. Mm. So I kind of started over and mm -hmm. he gave me a couple, like a 2% cortisone. Was he a derm? Mm -hmm. Okay. That seemed to help clear it up. But ever since that started, I've been using Cetaphil to okay. wash my face with. Cetaphil is actually it's a pretty very mild and... good neutral cleanser. It's very bland. Okay. And I oftentimes, if somebody's having an allergic reaction to something, I'll recommend Cetaphil. Okay. Because it's, it, people typically are very non-reactive to it. And it's not a bad cleanser. Okay. Um, okay, then what do you do after the Cetaphil? I usually just put on like a, an oil of Olay for a lotion. I have one that's got a sunblock in it. Okay, and, that's it. and is, it, um, is it one of the oil of Olay with peptides or anything like that? Like oil or I don't know, Regenerous actually. or something? No, I don't okay. think so. And it has an SPF? Yes. What's the SPF? I want to say 15. It's not okay. high, but it's there. Okay. And anything you do after that, that's pretty much it. Okay. Do you yeah. do the same cleanser at night? Yeah. Okay. And same moisturizer? Mm, okay. Yeah. Sometimes I'll actually do coconut oil at night. Okay. So just so you know, because usually I don't really say much of anything about the products that people use. Um, I. I asked the question mainly just to kind of find out well, how much time you spend on your skin and maybe your skin is dry because you don't use much in the way of moisturizers or maybe it's oily because you use too much. Okay. But anyway, coconut oil is comedogenic. 
in terms of the breakout when you mentioned acne. Oh, now that's not to say okay. that that's the only issue. Okay. But it in terms of ingredients are rated on a scale of zero to five. Okay. Coconut oil rates of five. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Anything that you do occasionally, like do you ever do a mask or a scrub? Not very often at all. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. A couple times a year or something, you know. Okay. Yeah. They're okay. fun, but I just never think about it. It's, I think you can see I don't spend a lot of time. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's, that's okay. You know, and, and the important thing is it's not necessarily how much time you spend. It's whether or not the time that you spend is focusing on the things that really bother you or that you want to change or improve and that you're using something that really can make a difference. Okay. So um, let's talk about the redness. Okay. Do, are you what we refer to as a flush or blusher? Let's say you have a glass of wine or you eat spicy yes. food. Do you get really red? Oh my goodness. I okay. can take a sip of wine and it's all the way down my neck. <laughs> okay. And if you look in the mirror and you look at the areas where you tend to be red, and if you were to look really closely, can you see what we call telangiectasias or dilated capillaries? You can see little red capillaries everywhere. I've actually probably never really looked that close. <laughs> now I, I, probably, I can see you probably what appears can. to be some capillaries from here. Okay. Okay. Did your derm did you ever diagnose you with rosacea? No. And mm -hmm. have you ever asked about the redness? And I haven't, not really. Okay. Because uh -uh. the only time I've ever gone in is just, you know, for flare-ups of something, you know. Uh-huh. When you had the contact dermatitis in the eye area, was it the lid that was itching or was it the actual rim of the eye? It was more the outer rim. The outer like, rim. it was up here on the lid a little bit and down here. Okay. Now, chances are it was contact dermatitis, mm -hmm. but the reason why it's good to get rosacea officially diagnosed is that about 48% of the time, 48% of the time, it affects the eye, ocular oh, rosacea. Okay. And oftentimes, it can, it can be like itchy eyes, it can look like you're having seasonal allergies, it can just look really red. And not to scare you, but ocular rosacea, if it goes untreated for a very long time, it gets really, 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 really bad, it can even lead to blindness. Okay. A lot of times with people that have... That's um, why I, really why I went in, because I'm like, this is by my oh, eye. This is okay. important, you know. <laughs> well, a lot of times when people have ocular rosacea, or sometimes if there's something similar referred to as blepharitis, they'll wake up and they'll have little crusts in their, um, like in, in their lash line. Okay. And they take hot compresses. And the, and the eyes just... Out. Yeah. And the eyes just tend to be very sensitive. Okay. Okay. Um, and that may not be you, and you may not have that, but it's it's just good to know. Good, and to, good yeah. to get if if you do have a rosacea. Okay. And I would say that the very least you're showing signs of vasomotor instability. I would say though that you probably have rosacea. And I and where do you think when you say you get acne? Where do you think you break out? It's random. I mean, like I had like three or four new ones on my nose a couple days mm -hmm. ago. Like, okay. where did those come from? Or I'll, you know, do a full face of makeup, be out. Is it and typically then come... in the cheek area at all? Actually, no. It's typically here and here. Okay. And kind of that the whole T-zone. Do they tend to kind of um, appear for no reason and then all of a sudden go away for no reason? I don't... I, I wouldn't say I'd say no. Yeah. So when do they hang around for a while? And if you get them on your nose, are they there for quite a while? Um, not really. I mean, the ones on my nose were like three days ago, and they're pretty much gone. You know. Okay. Um, the reason I ask is because with papular pustular rosacea, so as rosacea progresses into later stages, or the disease becomes a little bit more aggressive, people can get lesions that look just like acne. Oh. Okay. And they can even, I mean, they can even leave little scars, but they look just like acne. But if you were to biopsy one of those lesions, there's no microcomedo. So, ac so acne is always diagnosed. An acne lesion has to have a microcomedo to be an acne lesion. Interesting. And rosacea lesions are caused by inflammatory causes. It's not P. acne bacteria. It's not the same pathology. Okay. Okay. Now that's just not looks to say, the same or but similar. generally you get it in here. You could get it on the nose area okay. because the, the, you, you, I think you have some vascular issues with the nose area as well. And then you, you get it like in the cheek area. Mm -hmm. Usually if you're getting some lesions down on the chin area, that's typically something else. That's probably okay. acne. That's okay. probably acne. Now, if, if it, on the lesions you get on the chin area, do you get 
papules that turn into pustules, or do you get some of those kind of nodule things that are the hard underground? More of the first thing. Okay, yeah. papules. Okay. Yeah, okay. those other ones are yucky. They start. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've had to deal with that in a Good. long time, which I'm glad. Did you have Did you have acne as a teenager? I did, but not not that bad. I mean, okay. it was nothing. Whereas my siblings, both my brother and sister, had it. So it was it was fairly mild. Mm -hmm, fairly mild, definitely. Okay. And so tell me where you think you have large pores. Just all through here. Okay, so kind um, of... My nose, you know, my cheek, So you're my nose. pointing at the nose? I feel like the whole face, kind of personally, okay. but... <laughs> but maybe that's because I have one of those, um, you know, magnetic mirrors where you just see everything. <laughs> well, did you feel like you had larger pores as a teenager? Did you feel like this is something that's more of a... Of, of, I feel it's like it's gotten newer. worse as I've gotten older. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And where do you think you have um, brown spots? What you called? I've spots? got mostly like right one right here that bothers mm -hmm. me, um, and that's kind of the only one that really on my face that really seems to okay. stand out to me. And where do you think you have wrinkles? Just you know the normal okay. <laughs> there. So the crow's feet area and the mouth, and then you know. Okay. Getting saggy a little bit. So when you that. say mouth, you mean like the kind of what we call the nasal labial mm -hmm. fold smile lines. Okay. Okay, so where do I begin? <laughs> Talk down. Uh, <laughs> let's, let me start off a little bit with um, kind of sort of the overall skin rejuvenation, dry skin, okay. large pores, etc. So really... Most of what we see in our lifetime when we look in the mirror and we say, well, you know, you don't like large pores or you don't like fine lines, but textural changes, but, you know, it's just one of those things. Everybody gets older, Part right? Part of life, right. 90 to 95% of that is sun exposure, most of which was programmed really? into your skin before the age of 10. And at least 50% oh is programmed into your DNA by the age of 20. And I so, grew up with a pool, so I right. was in that the whole, all summer, every summer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, you don't have to be a dedicated sunbather, but it's things like that. You grow up, mm -hmm. you're in the pool, you're at ball games, you you know, you know, go to the fair, whatever. It's driving around in your car. Right. Incidental right. sun exposure. So virtually everything that we see. So there's what we call intrinsic aging, which are things that happen if you didn't have any sun exposure. And then there's extrinsic aging, but it's about 90 to 95% of what we see. Wow. And so that is literally programmed in your DNA. It takes 10, 20, 30 years to show up. Okay. The bad news okay. is, is that when it starts showing up and you've had your, you know, your happy <laughs> 20 years or whatever, <laughs> then it's, it, it's, it really kind of cascades. It can okay. happen very, very okay. quickly. So part of this is that, number one, large pores. So 80% of your dermis is collagen. Okay. And sun exposure, among other things, it breaks down collagen. Okay. One of the things that collagen does is it acts like a girdle around follicles, and it keeps them nice and compact. Okay. So that's part of the reason why, as the collagen decreases, that your follicles sort of get flabby. Okay. 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 Now, there's some things we can do for that. The other thing that happens is that sometimes you have retentive matter in your follicles. If you've ever had acne, if you have a tendency to acne then retentive matter in the follicles can cause the follicle to dilate. Okay, okay. The other thing that can make follicles look larger is as people get older, they oftentimes talk about their skin being drier, and particularly, if not in the T-zone, in the cheek area. Mm -hmm. So when you touch the outside of your skin, what you're doing is you're touching the stratum corneum. The stratum corneum is a dead layer. You actually shed about 500 million cells a day. You're just not aware of it. Little microscopic cells. Wow. <laughs> I guess that's why they say you can never, you can never commit the perfect murder because you're always going to leave something behind. <laughs> just, just a tip for the day. <laughs> but anyway, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. Um, but so what happens is, is you have this dead layer. And when you wash your face and you wet that dead layer down, right after you wash your face, it can actually feel, it feels nice and soft and mm -hmm. hydrated. Mm -hmm. Then what happens is it dries up and it shrinks. It's dead. Well, and it feels like I got to put lotion on. Yeah, it yeah. feels tight. It feels yeah. tight and dry. And really and truly, your skin really isn't tight and dry. You could not necessarily have a dry mm -hmm. skin, but what you're doing is when you put the lotion on, 
you're wetting down, you're moisturizing or lubricating that dead layer. So you're not really doing anything for your skin per se. <laughs> okay. But it's you, just making you feel better. <laughs> right. You temporarily make it feel better. And that's okay. kind of what moisturizers do. Okay. So what we want to do is virtually everything that you're talking about comes under the heading of kind of skin rejuvenation. And one of the primary things that we do for that is something called resurfacing. Resurfacing is a term that I use that addresses anything from fine lines. It addresses textural changes. You know, you start to get large pores. You want your skin to look glowing. You want it to look really smooth. You want to be able to wear makeup and feel like it's not settling in your follicles. And mm -hmm. at the same time, you want to feel like, oh, if I don't wear makeup, my skin looks great. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right. And you want that it to look even toned. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you want it to kind of not be have brown spots, but also not be red. All of those things. And so that's resurfacing. And you know, resurfacing addresses rosacea, it addresses mild to moderate acne, all those kinds of issues, the appearance of them. Um, and so um, kind of that's what we're going to focus on. Now, it, it also, I think, is going to make a big difference with your breakouts. Okay. okay. I don't think that you need to do anything that is in addition to what I'm going to recommend today, specifically, I think it's going to address the breakouts. Okay. okay. Um, but if we needed to do something in addition to that, we would. Okay. The, the other thing that I want to talk about is I want to talk about the redness mm. because mm. Um, that typically is progressive. Oh, really? Okay. And so I think that's something that generally, okay, I would venture to say, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I venture to say that probably when you're in your 20s, maybe 30s, you were a flusher blusher. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. but you weren't necessarily red all the time. Mm -hmm. So people that are that, that have rosacea typically are individuals that are fair-skinned, mm -hmm. and the usual onset, the actual onset is between the ages of 30 and 50, and it affects oh, okay. women more than it affects men. Okay. Now, you can have what I call pre-stage 1 rosacea, and that's where you've got somebody in their 20s, even late teens, they drink a glass of wine, or they get excited, and they just really flush mm -hmm. and blush very easily because they're showing signs of vasomotor instability. One of the primary factors in rosacea is sun exposure. Okay. So we don't know exactly what causes it, but we know that sun exposure is a major factor okay. because it stands to reason. Mm -hmm. If you have really fair skin, the sun is going to have a greater effect on that vascular structure. It's going to have a greater effect on just in general, okay. um, causing you know a lot of things that we see as aging. So that's something also that I think is going to be important to address because you don't want that just to get worse and worse. Yeah, because I definitely yeah. have found that I'm more red all the time. Uh -huh. You know, and it definitely will get worse, like if with mm -hmm. a glass of wine or when I'm feeling anxious about something, I've noticed that's something that's fairly new that I get red. And it's like, oh, that's kind of weird now. Well, it's written all over my face. What's rosacea going on? Rosacea <laughs> is a disease of vasomotor instability, it's a chronic okay. inflammatory disorder. And it is not a disease of sensitivity, it's a disease of reactivity. Okay. So okay. everybody has triggers. And some people, the common triggers for most people are things like, okay, they have a cup of coffee, they have a glass of wine, and usually it's, it's a lot of times it's red wine. Yeah, yeah. Or alcohol in general, spicy food. Or mm -hmm. like you say, you know, maybe you're have, you have a lot of stress or you're just sitting in a really stuffy room or the weather, it's really humid. Mm -hmm. All those things can be triggers. Mm -hmm. And what we now know about rosacea is that here's what it's triggering. There's a... Inflammatory protein known as catholicidin and kisilicidin, I believe it's pronounced. Mm -hmm. um, kisilicidin is actually a good inflammatory protein because it mediates certain factors when you wound yourself or you know you cut yourself, burn okay. yourself. Okay. So it's good. But if you're producing it when you're not wounded and you're just producing it for really no reason, <laughs> what it does is it seems to be one of the primary underlying factors in rosacea. Okay. So what we okay. have to do is we kind of have to address that so that you're not constantly reacting <laughs> and those triggers aren't being activated all the time and you're producing this protein. Mm -hmm. And so that we can kind of really have a major effect on that appearance of redness and keep okay. it a lot more consistent. Okay. Um, Calm it down. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I mean, I've tried, you know, lotions or whatever that'll say will help with redness. Or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At least what I've tried. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> what is interesting is that what we use for resurfacing are the same agents that physicians use for rosacea and for acne. For example, really? okay. when I'm going, I'm going to be putting her on the skincare management system. Okay. 
And one of the products in here is something called BioClear. And Bio BioClear is actually three acids. It's glycolic, it's salicylic, and azelaic acid. Azelaic acid is sold by prescription for acne and for rosacea. Oh. Azelaic acid is also one of the best resurfacing agents I've ever seen for, for fine lines. Really? Okay. And when you put it together with glycolic and salicylic, which are resurfacing, it is so dramatic for the appearance of your follicles, for just making the skin, the texture of the skin look so much smoother and so much more uniform. It helps the skin to look brighter. Um, but there's something in addition we're going to use for your redness, but that's just one of the things in the system okay. that okay. I think is going to make a big difference. Now, in terms of fine lines, okay, so I always like to talk about realistically what can you hope to achieve with skincare because <laughs> it's, you know, there's certain things you just, you can't do. Mm -hmm. So there's two types of lines and wrinkles. And one of the kind of fine lines and wrinkles and texture changes we see from sun exposure. Right, right. The other one is called dynamic muscle movement. So, as I always say, if you lived in a cave and you never made, you never went out in the sun. You never squinted. <laughs> but you did make expressions. Like you say, you squint or you, 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 you know, you smile. You, you yeah. smile a lot. What that does is it creates a crease in the muscle. Mm. And there are certain muscles that overwork. And the, the typical areas would be right here, mm -hmm. the forehead, the crow's feet. Mm -hmm. So we can soften those, but the reason why Botox is so popular, because what it does is it deactivates certain muscles that are overworking, oh, but okay. doesn't deactivate everything. Right, right, right. And what right. it happens is, is when that crease disappears, then you don't see a line in the skin. Gotcha, okay. Now, the other thing when you talk about smile lines, that has to do with, with volume. And probably 50% of many of the things that we look at when we look at the aging face has to do with volume. Volume gives the face definition, it makes it soft, and particularly in women, it's a very feminine quality. Mm -hmm. Generally, in a well-volumized face, the highest point of the face is the cheekbones, and then the face narrows down into a defined jawline. Mm -hmm. And the cheekbones are actually considered to be the most feminine feature of the female face. Really? Most, most defines femininity. Really? If you think about it, if you take That's... and put really high cheekbones in a guy, yeah. they tend to they look, look feminine. feminine. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And some, we That's have, very interesting. We have some male actors that I think they're still very handsome and they can play rugged parts, but like take Johnny Depp, for example. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hope he's not listening, but anyway. Um, if When he was really young, I, he, he was very handsome, but he could also make a great looking girl because it's very high cheekbones. Yeah, yeah. So um, as we age, the female face becomes more masculinized in appearance. So does a man because your cheek pads move down. Interesting. But when it happens in a man, we're very complimentary. Oh, they look so rugged. We don't. Yeah, why look do men look way. so much better as they get older? Because <laughs> they tend to look more masculine. Okay. okay. So our cheek That's pads move down, and as our cheek pads move down, as this area flattens, the female face becomes more masculine. Interesting. Okay. And you see a nasal labia fold. Mm -hmm. Then, as the platysma muscle pulls down, the corners of the mouth get pulled down with it, mm -hmm. and. What happens over time is that instead of this being the highest, widest point, it flattens out. This becomes the, hot, the, the, the widest point, point with, okay. with sort of jowling. Um, by the age of 60, about 80% of all females will lose the show of upper teeth. What that means is that in, if you look at a model and they're mm -hmm. not smiling broadly, you still see the well-defined vermilion border and you see the upturned lip mm -hmm. and you see the teeth. But in other people, and if you think about mom and grandma, lots of times, unless they're smiling broadly, you see the lower teeth. I never, ever thought about that, but And you the are reason right. is because the lip actually elongates. Okay. And it flattens Very and it turns under. Okay. And doctors have a name for that. They call it horse lip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, but actually... There are certain things that we can do today to kind okay. of make the lips look fuller and more defined, mm -hmm. and um, also to help with the dryness. Now, one thing I want to mention about dryness on lips, this is not uncommon. And also, it's not uncommon with lipstick that we all love to wear, 
that over time, years and years of lipstick use, you can actually even get a very kind of mild contact dermatitis where it just makes the lips dry all the time. That's that what lipstick mean... does to me. And then it like gets mm -hmm. all like flaky. Well, and... it doesn't mean that you shouldn't wear lipstick, but here's what I recommend, and I recommend this to everyone. First of all, everything that you put on your face, you should put on your lips. Everything. Really? But, okay. Exactly. And, okay. and first of all, your lips are the most vulnerable anyway. But at night, what you want to always do when you clean your face is you want to take your washcloth and you want to scrub those lips really good. Okay. If you have ever had, you said you've had really dry lips, but when you've ever had dry peely lips and you go to pull the peelies off, it makes them bleed, yes. right? Yes. It but if you worse. scrub it with a washcloth, it just makes it very, very smooth. And then what you do is everything you put on your face, put on everything your lips in the system, you're going to put on your lips, okay. rub it in your lips. Okay. And during the day, that includes sunscreen. But then, what I recommend is at night, and this is if your significant other can put up with this, what you want to do is you want to cause the moisture in your lips to not be able to escape, and you want to um, cause it to accumulate over time. So when you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh my God, my so lips are so soft and luscious and smooth and, and plump and nice. And so what you do is you want to put something over the top of the lips that creates a barrier. Okay. That can't sink in. That can be Vaseline. It can be um, uh, Aquaphor. Okay. It can be okay, okay. something, uh, gosh, um, there's a company called Janet Sarton that used to make something called, um, it, it looked like lard. <laughs> it, was their, oil. It, was their, yeah. it was their older woman cream. But the thing was is that it doesn't sink in. Okay. You wake up in the morning, it's kind of still there, but your lips are all nice and soft. That's and in a cool. sense, you've given a barrier, you've protected them from the elements and allowed right. moisture to accumulate. Okay. Well, especially in the summer, we've got a fan going all night, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. It's like, I know that doesn't help. <laughs> and the other thing is, and I haven't seen you do this, but the other thing is, is a lot of times people, um, when they wear lip balms and things, are always licking their lips. Well, I do do that, and I've been very oh. conscious of it while I've been sitting here. I'm like trying really hard not to. But that is a really bad habit that I have. Well, like... one of the other things, and this is not necessarily on the same with the dry lips, but um, we see this even in women in their in their twenties. You have people get little lip lines around their mouth, mm -hmm. and they even when they're very faint, and you have somebody who's twenty five, and you can't really even see the lines. It's just enough that if you wear red lipstick, it bleeds. It bleeds right through. Yeah, I have and seen that's that. really annoying. Um, uh, we make, this is our Hyla Lip Complex, and one of the reasons that I love this product is not because, as, is, is because, one of the reasons I love it is because it makes the lips look more, a lot more plump and a lot more defined, and it has some of the same elements as our Hyla Face product in terms of volumization and, and all of those elements, but when you don't just put it on the lip, you rub it all the way around. Oh, really? Okay. And I can wear red lipstick all day long. And it doesn't, it doesn't bleed. bleed. That's cool. And I'm and I'm and I'm going to be 67 in December. Wow. So I consider that a pretty good feat. That's an um, amazing feat. <laughs> yeah. So at any rate, um, I'm just trying to think. And I'm like looking else. at your skin. I'm like, I don't think you have pores. Uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Well, I I want I, I I'm a two-time Accutane failure. I had really? severe cystic acne. I didn't have acne as a teenager. I had perfect skin. I had acne started it when I was about 19. Really, yeah. really. So thank you. I appreciate that. It's when you, because I, because I work at it, and so. Oh yeah, no, your skin's gorgeous. Thank <laughs> you. Oh, that's that's very kind. I appreciate that. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do again, I'm going to put you on the skincare management system. Okay. Now the cleanser in the skincare management system is almost exactly the same consistency as Cetaphil. Oh, is it really? Okay. But it has glycolic acid in it. Okay. And. I have to, to warn you that oftentimes when you use a glycolic acid cleanser, it can kind of sting a little bit. And unless your face just gets really inflamed and you're just, you know, running around the house yelling water, water, <laughs> don't worry about it. But um, glycolic acid is the smallest molecule of any alpha hydroxy acid. Now you can have a really good cleanser. We make some cleansers that don't have glycolic. Cetaphil doesn't have glycolic. It's a good cleanser. But cleansers can't get into your follicle. Glycolic acid can. Okay. okay. And so what that does is if there's any follicular retention, it helps to break that down. It just makes the skin look much, much more poreless. 
And okay. I mean, I don't know what I would do without glycolic acid. <laughs> um, there's a lipid soluble C in here, a lipid soluble C that has something in it also in the product called DMAE, dimethylamine ethanol, which actually causes the skin to look, kind of pull up and look more contoured. Okay. And it, it, it really does, it's not just like a phony baloney. Um, then you have the BioClear product with three acids. There's something in here called Transformation, which is your moisturizer. Okay. Um, among other things, there's a lot of technology in transformation, but Dr. Weedo of Jefferson University has transferring growth factor beta 1, said that transfer factor, trans, uh, transferring growth factor beta 1 stimulates the type of collagen you don't produce after the age of 30. Oh, okay. Okay, that's um, awesome. And then a sunscreen, and the sunscreen is an SPF 33. Okay. One of the things that I love and everyone loves about the sunscreen is it has an oil capture system. Any place on the face where you tend to be combination, it balances you out. It cannot absorb the water though and it can't absorb actives. But any place where you tend to be dry, you feel really soft and silky. Even when I'm indoors, I wear the sunscreen because my skin you like feels, feels better. Yeah. Yes, it does. And it has a lot of other um, elements in it, but it covers, the, it's a broad spectrum sunscreen. It covers everything and that's so important for you. Because in the U.S., sunscreens are an over-the-counter drug. When you look at the SPF factor, mm -hmm. that only relates to UVB rays. Okay. They, that rating has nothing to do with UVA. Uh -huh. So UVB, your burning rays, which are the, the strongest between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., right. you could be out in the sun and you could say, oh, I'm not burning, I'm being protected. But the UVA rays, which go in like an X-ray, they're the same intensity all year long and all day long, and even when it's cloudy, um, can be doing tremendous damage, particularly for people okay. that have rosacea. Yeah, I've heard people say you can get more burnt on a cloudy day than a sunny day. Well, you don't even really even see a burn with UVA so much as you the, the damage, damage is, is programmed. Done. Exactly. Okay. So... Okay. Um, Broad spectrum is absolutely critical because it goes throughout the whole spectrum as opposed to just part of the spectrum. Okay. So um, I, I think you're really going to love that sunscreen. I'm also going to put you on something called Rosaleaf. Okay. So that's for the redness, the appearance okay. of the redness. And this, um, we'll talk more about this. Okay. But I think this is going to be um, really kind of a game changer okay. for you. Okay. And for in the future, what I want to do is I probably, once your skin ad adjusts, I probably want to get you on something called Marine Illuminate. Marine Illuminate is a product that addresses the appearance of discoloration. Oh, okay, okay. But even if people don't have obvious brown spots, you have something called background pigmentation. Mm -hmm. Look at a picture of somebody when they're 20, 25. Look at a picture of them when they're, you know, 30 or 40. There's just a difference in the coloration of the skin. It doesn't look, it doesn't have the same clarity, it doesn't have that same beautiful glow, that luminosity. And everyone over the age of 35, 100% of people will have abnormal pigment. So this is a huge growing concern. Okay. And this, this really is a game changer. Um, but it has retinol in it. Okay. Which and I've heard of retinol it, yeah. is got more net medical data. That and glycolic acid has more medical data than any other topical agent in terms really? of its ability to DH the skin. The appearance of, you know, fine lines and texture and all mm -hmm. of that. And again, mm -hmm. pore size can make a huge difference in that. So um, I'm going to see skin management, normal mm -hmm. combo, and do the rose leaf. And I'm also going to give you something called luminate eye gel. Okay. Around the eye area. And the Hyla 3D lips. And then for the future, we'll talk about the Luminate. Okay. And also, I'm maybe going to think about the Hyla 3D face. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Um, any questions for me? Just a lot to process, I guess, and I'm sure you'll show me how to use the stuff. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm super excited. I'm really I'm excited. I'm so glad. So I think excited. I told you on the phone, my husband deals with rosacea, uh -huh. and it's pretty, you know, a couple patches right there, and it definitely kind of breaks out once in a while, mm. um, but I could not get him to come do this, so I'm like, well, I might let him try my little products and see if, maybe I can take a before and after pictures for him. 
for you, I mean. Yeah, for, well, men, you know, we can talk about what he can do, but men don't get rosacea as frequently as women. We don't okay. know why, but when they do get it, generally it progresses. It's been really difficult to get more, rid of. And it's more aggressive. Yeah. And there is no cure for rosacea. But you do have to manage your triggers. That's the other thing, okay. is that... You can your skin can be going along and be very calm, and then you go out and have that you know really spicy dinner, or you have a glass of wine, and it flares everything up again. Interesting. And it's okay. hard because there's so many things that we like to do. Right. And right. It, it can be it can be a major trigger for rosacea. Yeah. So yeah, we can talk about that. Well, it has <laughs> been a pleasure. Thank and you, Dan. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you bye for now, everybody, and please, please, please subscribe. Bye.